He has and to be my months. bloodline. Why not? Why I not find out he's my bloodline? Instead of almost seven months. Why I mean, not you going through? You going through? I got to know that he's my bloodline. He's going through. Take care of him. He's going through Facebook to find out and asking people on the street. I ain't going through it. Somebody showed me. DNA test. Somebody found out. Me and told me about it. Mrs. Kelso here insists that she is just 22 years old when she in fact looks 40. But her age isn't the dispute she wants this court to settle. Instead, she has brought two men to court to figure out which one is her baby's child. One of the men, she says, could be her child's father, Jamal Davis, says he is certainly not the baby's father because he has seen Miss Kelso with at least 10 other men. And here is how it all began. Kelso, you are in court today to prove that Mr. Davis is the father of your nine-month-old baby, Connor Kelso. Yes, Your Honor. You claim Mr. Davis has done nothing for your son, so you're suing for half the child-rearing expenses in the sum of $2,561. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, that seems like an easy maths question that we can figure out. Miss Kelso has a calendar which she says proves that all of this happened during the window of conception, and her calendar does prove it. But what does Mr. Davis have to say about that? Mr. Davis, does this look familiar? Were you with Miss Kelso on January the 7th? As far as that particular date, I'm not for sure. I was definitely with her during that time frame, though. Yes, yes, Your Honor. You were? Yes. So, Miss Kelso, you admit that you were also with another man? Yes, Your Honor. It was Mr. Hafner. Without protection? Yes, Your Honor. Unfortunately, it is not so straightforward because Ms. Kelso was also intimate with another man during that time frame, but there is another line of evidence here. Mr. Davis is black, and this other potential father is white, and the baby's skin is getting darker, according to Ms. Kelso. Here is how she puts it. When the child came late, did you ever think to yourself, maybe it's Mr. Hafner's child, not Mr. Davis? I, I just go by the conception date, and by the way that my son looks, I see it in his skin color. The more I see his skin get darker. But that could also be Mr. Hafner's family because they're half Puerto Rican and they have dark children in their family as well. Well, he certainly is away from you now, isn't he? So Ms. Kelso said he should stay away. And now she is crying in court that he actually stayed away. Talk about instant karma. And since then, Ms. Kelso has spent over $2,000 on raising the child. How much has Mr. Davis contributed to that? Can you guess? Because it is a lot of money. Okay, just kidding. It is just $10. But he has a very good reason for that. Ms. Kelso, you say that he hasn't contributed at all to the child rearing expenses you've incurred thus far. No, he has not. And I have put together a little draft of the expenses that I have had to purchase, things that I've had to buy for my son since I'd like born. to see those. Did you bring the receipts for those purchases? No, I did not. How much did they cost? They were very low cost. I mean, some of them were dollars. I mean, no more than $10 for all of them. Wait, hold up. Wait a second. Ms. Kelso says she stopped being promiscuous when she met Mr. Hafner, but she actually cheated on Mr. Hafner with Mr. Davis. So she clearly did not stop being promiscuous, but she has a really good excuse for doing that too, if you can believe it. That was the exact date. The exact and, date. And that's the day I met him, that's the day the that house. I started sleeping with him, and that's the day that I started dating him, the day I met his family. They're all here present today. And the only reason that Mr. Davis is in the picture is because I had been cheated on by Mr. Hafner, and so I cheated back with Mr. Davis. Well, having revenge with your genitals is precisely the sort of thing that gets you here in front of all these people. And Mr. Davis talks a lot about Miss Kelso being promiscuous, but he still sleeps with her without protection. Isn't that insane? Well, you probably will not believe this, but he also has a good excuse for that, too. That's all I was interested in. And were you using protection all these no, months? No, we weren't because she told me that she was medically unable to have children. And in the four months that we were together, she never so much as had a scare with her. And we met, I can count with one hand, I don't even need all five fingers on how many times we've used condoms. And now all of a sudden she's pregnant. Are you and proud all of, a sudden, of this? I'm the father. No. This does not even make any sense. Pregnancy is not the only reason why you should not wet hump without protection. There are like a trillion STDs that you could get infected with. Anyway, let us hear from the other man, Mr. Hafner. Mr. Hafner. Thank you for joining us today. I have to ask you, do you think baby Connor is your child? That's what I think. You do? Yes, Your Honor. And so, have you done anything for Connor thus far? Have you helped in raising him? Yes, Your Honor. I have been feeding him, being there for him, showing him I love him. Yeah, maybe. And I'm going out on a limb here. Maybe that is because they are only a few days old in that picture. Anyway, you get the sense that Mr. Davis wants to get out of being responsible for this kid in literally any way he can. Let us see if the DNA test result will grant him his wish. Mr. Hafner, you are not the father. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Davis, you are the father. <laughs> Do you need to sit down, Miss Kelso? You need to sit down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God.
little people. Ms. Sanders says you should never deny a pretty baby even if the baby isn't yours. She says that another man signed her baby's birth certificate, but she is now claiming that Mr. Brady here is actually the real father, not the poor guy who signed the birth certificate in the first place. The question now is, if Ms. Sanders could lie to that man, how do we know she is not lying now? Well, we are about to find out. Ms. Sanders, you admit to having another man sign your six-month-old son Caleb's birth certificate, but now say that Caleb's real biological father is the defendant, Mr. Jamarvis Brady. Yes, Sean. You've petitioned the court for a DNA test to prove that Mr. Brady is your son's father. Yes, Sean. Exactly. The baby could be pretty and still not belong to Mr. Brady. It is insane that Miss Sanders here thinks that is a good enough reason for Mr. Brady to take care of Caleb. Let us pick Mr. Brady's mind for a moment. Why does he doubt this beautiful child is his? Does he visit the baby? I came that's, through the neighborhood one that's day. A reason why I and he visit. asked me if he could see why my would baby. I take care of a baby that's not mine. Why would I visit a baby that's not mine? I Look how pretty visit my baby, baby is. How can you deny? Not a pretty baby. I, I don't care about the baby being pretty. I care if I, about if the baby mine or not. Why would I take you care of my responsibility, not another man. That is a valid question. Green eyes don't just come out of nowhere, but maybe there are green eyes in Miss Sanders' family. And that is exactly the argument that Miss Sanders makes. She says green eyes ain't bigger in her part of town. Starting with my grandparents, my grandma don't have brown eye, green eyes, <laughs> my granddaddy don't got green eyes, my mama or my daddy. Her either, obviously. Me, I definitely don't have brown, green eyes. I'm trying to figure out where these green eyes come from that's on this baby. Maybe Miss Sanders has green eyes. How many times have women told the potential fathers of their kids to get lost only to turn up on paternity court asking Judge Lauren to get those men to take responsibility? So many times. But Miss Sanders says she has a good reason for doing that. Because I didn't want to be with him no more. So he got mad you. because I that's got back with my eggs. He said he don't want me, but he constantly takes my phone, tell myself, so what's up? I come to the house, dudes coming and going all the time. Like, I hey, left her house. How you gonna tell I me that dudes house. coming and going, but you I not? I left her a house a and the dude see. came through, the same dude who she was texting. How her you gonna get came it? through while I was pulling out. This back and forth is tiring. Mr. Brady says that he was there for the pregnancy. Miss Sanders says he is nothing but a dirty liar and that he was never there despite the pregnancy being so difficult. But Mr. Brady says that he did not care because he thought the child wasn't his. And he has a really dumb excuse. Mr. Brady, Your I gotta Honor. ask you, she's going through a lot here. Why weren't you there? Your Honor, she, I, when I tried to take care of him and all that, she told him she didn't need my help. And plus, why would I take care of a baby that's not possibly mine? When yeah. I was pregnant, he never even cared. I don't think he cared about what some shoes. When I first told him, him that I was pregnant. I called Mr. Brady and I told him, I said, I'm pregnant. I want to let you know. He just sat on the phone. Well, that is true. But you should have also thought about that before having unprotected intercourse with someone who can't even take care of himself. But more on that part about an ex signing the birth certificate. But he says you had another man sign the birth certificate. Your yes, my ex-boyfriend, before me and Jamarvis got together, I was with someone. And to get back at my ex-boyfriend, me and Jamarvis started talking. So after me and him stopped talking, I got back with my ex. And my ex, he was, he was real understanding. He was just saying, and, you know, we just gonna work through this. We gonna, you know, have this baby. We gonna do what we have to do. And he was the one who was actually there when I had my baby. Phew, this is a lot. So the other man has been tested. And Miss Sanders says Mr. Brady is the only other option. Well, that means that he has to be the father, right? Well, let us see what the DNA test has to say about all of this. Is Mr. Brady the father? Or is there someone else who could be the father? Mr. Brady, you are not. I oh. told her that was my baby, y'all. Sit down. I told her. Sit down over there. Come in front of these posts. Stand right where you stand. I told you, on. I know it wasn't mine. 100% positive. Miss Sanders, he said he was positive. So who the I don't understand. I really don't understand. So it's not your exes, it's not his. It was no one else. It was no one else. Had to be. Miss Janelle Craig has claimed three different men to be the fathers of her adult child, Chanel Craig. Today, Miss Chanel wants to know if the man she called father her entire life is actually her real biological father. The father in question, Tracy Thompson, also believed he was the real father, but now a shocking revelation has changed his mind. Let us listen to Miss Chanel. Miss Janelle Craig, you are Miss Craig's mother. You admit to sleeping with more than one man at the time your daughter was conceived, yet you argue you don't understand why she's still looking for answers. Right, correct. Now, Mr. Thompson, you say you always assumed you were Miss Craig's father. Yes, Your Honor. But then you claim a startling revelation caused you to question paternity. Yes, Your Honor. 
Well, Ms. Janelle has a great explanation for this disconnect. She says that that man was her ex-boyfriend and the man Chanel got introduced to later on is her real father. And here is how Ms. Janelle even told Mr. Thompson that they had a baby together. I saw him and his wife in a tavern and I walked up to him and said, hey, baby daddy, we have a child together and they're looking at me with like him, I'm crazy. He, <laughs> him and his wife were just yes, at a tavern? Yes, and I walked up and said, hey, baby daddy. He's like, no, I don't have any kids. So I'm like, yeah, we have a 10-year-old child together. Yeah. Yeah, Judge Lauren. Miss Janelle literally had no option but to drop that bomb like that. What did you expect her to do? Use some tact? Really? Tact is for losers, and Miss Janelle here does not lose. Let us see what Mr. Thompson thought about that approach anyway. So how did you find out that I remember, Chanel... I remember seeing Chanel when Chanel was a baby. She was a small little baby. She was one, but uh -huh. I came out of prison. She was a little baby, and I came by her grandmama house. Her mother wasn't there. And You're so lying. You never told me that and I don't even believe you went to my mama's house. The fact that this is even being debated is insane. Someone here is a really crazy liar, and Judge Lauren has to figure out who that is immediately. In fact, Mr. Thompson has a totally different recollection of how he got back into Chanel's life. How did you get back into her Chanel, life? Chanel, Chanel auntie had gave me a call and told me that Chanel needed me and told me that her mother was gone away and she needed me badly. And she told, asked me if I could come back and get into her life. Okay. And that's what I did. And so even though you had doubts when you saw her when she was a child, when you got this call from her aunt that she needed you, you came back again. Correct. Wow. So Mr. Thompson left after all that. And then he came back when Chanel was around 15. But Chanel just was not having that. And they could not build a relationship. Of course, this somehow caused an argument between Ms. Janelle and Mr. Thompson, and it went like this. You but did. he wasn't around that long. He came back when I was about to turn 17, two months before my birthday. Mm -hmm. Things weren't going too well with her and the relationship they was having, because Janelle That's was- That's mother and daughter, but how do you come in from being gone seven years and say, oh, you can come live in my house again? And she don't know you. Wait, what does Janelle mean she raised Chanel? Because this kid was in foster care for long stretches of her life. Anyway, Mr. Thompson still never believed that Chanel was his child because her birth certificate had a different name. So this was so confusing for Chanel. When I got back in touch with him, his girlfriend and her kids was telling me that he was saying that he didn't think I was his. Because somebody else's name was on a birth certificate. That's why I didn't believe it. I told you that when I first met Chanel you back told, up again. Chanel told me that you when she said her, 16. I said she showed me her birth certificate because she had she needed an ID, a state ID. Yeah, you objectively didn't do that, Ms. Janelle. The state helped you raise your child and you did a bit of the work, but not all by yourself. But if Mr. Thompson met Janelle as a virgin, why does he even have any doubts in the first place? In this relationship, you said she was a virgin. Correct. So why is it you have doubts if you're Chanel's father if you thought she was a virgin when how, you were... Look how it come to me. It came to me as in, like, this is your baby. I ain't never seen her pregnant. I've been gone. Whoa. Mr. Thompson really doesn't want to fight that battle again. That's probably why he is very hesitant to acknowledge Chanel as his without the blood test. Well, let's see what the truth actually is. Is Chanel Mr. Thompson's baby, or does the child belong to another man? Miss Craig, Mr. Thompson is not your father. Sorry, Mio. You can give me a hug. I'm your mom and dad. Don't matter. I'm still your daddy. I love you. I'm sorry. So I can tell you wanted to just hear that he was your father to have that closure. <laughs> Yeah, cause he the only man that's in my baby life right now. Miss Webster had to go to church to pray to God to reveal who her real father is. She had grown up thinking that her real father was Mr. Smith, but now she has reason to believe that it could be another man, Mr. Ware. Both men are in court today, and we are going to get to the bottom of this case with or without God's intervention. So let us get started with Ms. Webster herself. I heard uh, a relative say that that's not none of your father, so I started questioning. I asked my mom, I, I, I talked to Mr. Smith, like why are they saying that I'm not a part of their family? When you questioned Mr. Smith, what did he say? He said, you always be my daughter. I believe in my heart that you are, and no matter what, you'll always be my daughter. Wow. And it doesn't end there. Ms. Webster says that relatives of Mr. Ware even signed on her birth book and brought presents. That means they at least suspected that Mr. Ware could be the father of Ms. Webster. But Mr. Ware says that he was always told that Ms. Webster was another man's baby, and he basically took her word for it. And Mr. Ware got no information about the child either, and then they lost contact. And here is how Mr. Ware said it. A couple of years after that, I went into the military. Okay. And when you came back, no one said to you, you may have a child? No one said that to me, and the mom had moved back to Ohio, so I never saw her for years. Were you there? 
when her mom was pregnant? Yes, I was there when her mom was pregnant. Uh, as a matter of fact, we continue to date at that point. Wow. Anyway, Ms. Webster then started searching for Mr. Ware. After realizing that he could be her father, she went to his church and then poured out her heart to God to help her reveal if he was truly her father or not. And then this happened. All right, so let's fast forward to the day you finally get to meet Mr. Ware. We went to visit him at his church. I've just been praying, you know, that I find out who my father is. There's things in my life, there's roadblocks and stumbles I've been going through. There's things that goals I'm achieving. And knowing who my father is is one of them. And I came to the Lord, I went to the Altar. They had altar call, and I went up, and uh, I just prayed that God give me a sign to reveal. Whoa, that could be a miracle. But despite Ms. Webster's faith, that is not actually evidence that Mr. Ware is her father. In fact, it is not evidence of anything, and any court would throw that testimony out. But Ms. Webster says that Mr. Ware has to feel it too, because he is a deacon and a spiritual person. But Mr. Ware insists that he knew nothing about it. When I was down, no, I didn't know who was standing there when, when I got up. You know, I get up and I turn around and he's right there. So, I mean, something, it's gotta be some energy, it's gotta be something. It, it can't be in vain. You are a deacon, right? Yes, I am. And he's a spiritual person. He's a, did, did I you know? know it was her? Did you know it was Miss Webster, this baby? I did that not. That you knew before she even left the womb? Did you know? No, I did not know at that time. So Ms. Webster feels a connection, but Mr. Ware feels absolutely nothing. Wow, that is cold. And then Mr. Ware drops a line that makes everyone in the courtroom shiver. He looks Ms. Webster right in the eyes and says this. So you did not feel a connection like this could be my daughter. The way in which she says your mother reacted when she met her and said, what took you so long? No, Your Honor, I did not. The fact of the matter is, is that you are not my child. I love you like a child. That must be so painful for Ms. Webster. But you can tell that there is no malice in his voice. He just truly believes that Ms. Webster is not his child. And that is that about that. Now, let us hear from Mr. Smith, who basically raised Ms. Webster. What does he have to say about all of this? Thank you for joining us, Mr. Smith. As you know, we're here discussing the paternity as it relates to Ms. Webster. You have been paying child support. For yes, I have. But you don't believe you're her biological father. No, I don't. I can tell you why. Please. And Ms. Webster was born uh, September the 17th, which means that she had to be conceived either late December or January of 76 or late December of 75. I was in the United States Army, stationed in Fort Hood, Texas. Wow. So how did he end up paying child support? Well, Mr. Smith said he just did it because he was raised to do the right thing and because he was also naive. That is insane. Thankfully, Ms. Webster's mom is also in court today, and here is her side of this insane story. Mr. Smith also came home on leave. Once we got together, Mr. Smith went back to the service, and then I was pregnant. When Mr. Smith called me one day, I said, you know what? I'm pregnant. I've never received that call, Your Honor. Yes, you did. When I come home from the military, I got a letter in the mail stating that I had to come down to the child support. When I got there, Ms. Webster, was like Ms. Brady was there. That is a lot. So who is really telling the truth? Ms. Brady here says she has no doubts that Mr. Smith is her baby's father. She is positive and certain that the father is Mr. Smith. Well, let us see who the father really is. The DNA test result is the only way to clear up this entire story. Mr. Smith, you are not her father. Are you surprised? Hurt? Yes. Surprised? No. Um, I, I, I thank you for everything that you've done for me. Always, you, baby. I Always. appreciate you. And like you said... Always. Always, sweetie. You just told me you were sure. I thought I was sure. I thought I, I really had it in my heart that Mr. Smith we were was her dad. This was a paternity case like no other. With so much regret, Mr. Patrick appeared in court, claiming that a stranger whom he welcomed into his home out of the kindness of his heart ended up sleeping with his girlfriend. He now believes he is not the father of her twins. He opened his case by saying, Mr. Patrick, you say five years ago you made a huge mistake by opening your doors to a stranger who needed a place to stay because that man betrayed you and slept with your girlfriend, Ms. Pence. Today, you're here to prove that you didn't father Pence's fraternal twins, four-year-olds Larry and Carrie, and the other man did. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Patrick must have been a really welcoming man. The question ringing in everyone's head was about how a stranger he welcomed into his home ended up kicking it in bed with his girlfriend. In his story, he claimed that one evening, the defendant, Ms. Pence, disappeared overnight. It was on. Me and her sat around and had a few drinks, sitting at home enjoying ourselves. And she up and leaves and goes across the street to the neighbors. 10.30 runs around, no Miss Pence. Two, three o'clock comes around in the morning. Still no Miss Pence. 
Well, she doesn't show up until the next day, about 10.30 in the morning. Really? And her, her hair's a wreck. Looked like she went through a, a hurricane or something. Miss so Pence, you punching. got missing overnight? I did, Your Honor. OMG, she sneaked out to sleep with the stranger? Now that's something you don't see every day. In trying to defend herself, she claimed that Mr. Patrick always accused her of sleeping with people, even though she knew for a fact that she hadn't slept with anyone. I had never... Um, slept with anyone else before that you're, night. I had you're constantly. Flirt. You're so flirtatious. I was constant. That's how I was brought up. I'm constantly calling honey, people honey babe. and babe. What did that's I just, I'm from the South. Different that's how I was raised. It has nothing to do with that. I never slept with anyone before that. Never. No. You constantly accused me of it, and I kept telling you, you're going to keep pushing and keep pushing, and it's going to happen. Hmm. Mr. Patrick might be onto something there. Maybe the sexual tension was getting too much for them to handle. Anyway, Miss Penny was not going to deny that what she did was wrong, but she claimed that deep down in her heart, she wanted to make things right. There, there, there was for him. no specific reason as to why that guy, it was just someone at the time that was around and it happened. That I know and of. So it was probably the biggest mistake that I've ever made in my life. Um, I wish that I would have never made that mistake. Uh -oh. It should have never happened at all. It should have never happened, but it did, and I can't go back and change that. It's done, it's over with. I just want, I want some closure today so I don't have to continue to deal with the arguments and, and you constantly saying that I'm cheating and. I mean, can she really blame him for thinking she's always cheating after what she did? She better cut him some slack. Judge Lauren then went on to ask her when she found out she was pregnant. Ms. Pence explained to the judge when she conceived her baby, using this exhibit. And then on August 7th is the date that the twins were born. That, that don't mean that. That's a five day window. It does. The doctor had said that the twins were conceived right around the 2nd of November, Your Honor. The twins were born almost completely full term. And if you count those dates back, it only leads to Mr. Patrick. There's Mr. No Patrick, possible. do you agree with those dates? They seem to add up. No, Your Honor, I don't. Oh, she thought she was smart. Was she trying to hide the date she slept with the stranger from the judge? Oh, well. Aside from the fact that she cheated on him, Mr. Patrick told the judge that he had other reasons that made him doubt he was not the father of the child. I think he's ADHD or something like that. You know what I mean? Some, he doesn't listen. He's rambunctious. He's a little boy. I understand Mr. he's Patrick. a little boy, and I hope he grows out of it someday. But I believe he's ADHD. Or There's something. nothing or wrong with that. And so, it doesn't run in my family. How do you know that? How do you know that it doesn't well, run I've in your family? I've been with you for ten years. Honey. It doesn't matter. You don't know everything, every single thing about your family history. Hmm. I'm not going to fault Judge Lauren for asking a doctor to come to the courtroom. Mr. Patrick, for some reason, felt that one of the twins had a disorder that made him feel the child was not his. This was what the doctor had to say. They can be, but it's a much more complicated picture than that and that's not the entire story. So sometimes we can point to one gene, sometimes it's multiple genes, and sometimes it's the way that the genes interact with the environment, and sometimes the genes have nothing to do with it, and it's just something that happened during the pregnancy or during the delivery or in that child's early childhood um, that can affect how they learn. From the doctor's explanation, it looks like Mr. Patrick might be wrong to claim that he is the father of just one of the twins. But one thing was certain, his doubts were affecting his relationship with Ms. Penny on a major level. Yes, but your honor, we haven't, all this we haven't even been uh, had sex in probably the past four months. It's it's just a constant argument from the time that I get up until the time that I go to bed, pretty much. It's constant argument. Over, Concerning paternity over issues? Paternity and the one night stand and him saying that it happened more than the one time, your honor. You heard Mr. Patrick. If it happens that he isn't the father of the twins, he is dumping Ms. Pence's ass and leaving her with the kids. After so much talking had been done, Judge Lauren felt it was time to reveal the results of the lie detector test. This was how it played out. You were asked the following questions. During the last 10 years of your relationship with Mr. Patrick, have you had sexual contact with any other man other than the man whom you admitted to cheating with? Yes, Your Honor. You said no. The lie detector determined you were being deceptive. How is that? Oh, wow. Ms. Penny had more skeletons in her cupboard than she was willing to tell the courtroom. After hearing those results, Judge Lauren felt it was time to reveal the DNA results and see if anything Ms. Pence said was true at all. This was her verdict. Mr. Patrick, you are the father. I told you that you were the father. I told you. <laughs> are you relieved, Mr. Patrick? Oh, very much so. No, the, the, the deception stuff with the lie detector <laughs> test, that's something that's going to have to be worked on because that just right there shows me I, I may not be able to trust her again. This was one situation no one saw going horribly wrong. Ms. Cole was present in court to prove to the judge that the defendant, Mr. Gilbert, was the father of her child. Even though she admitted to sleeping with multiple men, she was certain that he was the father of her child. This was how she began her case. Ms. Cole, you are currently five months pregnant and both
both you and your mother claim there is no doubt as to whose baby you are carrying. Ms. Cole, you admit to sleeping with multiple men. However, you are 100% certain that Mr. Gilbert is the father of your unborn child. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. The defendant's mom definitely doesn't like Ms. Cole and her mother. Hearing that confession from Mr. Gilbert's mom, the judge decided to ask Ms. Cole if what they had was a relationship or it was a fling that resulted in her having a baby. Her daughter are constantly lying. We don't know the truth from fiction anymore. I'd like to just find out where we stand on this whole situation. Is everything that comes out of their mouths is lies. So you believe the baby she's carrying is not your son's child? Absolutely. I, I, at this point in time, I cannot truly, honestly say I believe a word of anything that comes out of their mouths. I do not believe that is my son's child. That's why I'm here today. Oh, wow. I guess that answers that question. It was all about them kicking it in bed. Now, when Ms. Cole found out she was pregnant, she wasted no time texting Mr. Gilbert and informing him that she was carrying his baby. This was the content of the text message she sent. We were just having sex. Was it more than once? Twice in one day. Twice in one day. And then after that, never again? Never again, no. Mr. Gilbert, how did you find out Ms. Cole was pregnant? Uh, she contacted me through uh, text messages and told me. So you sent a text message, Ms. Cole? Yes, Your Honor. And what did it say? I have it here. You do? Yes. You brought evidence. Did he respond to that text by saying, oh boy? I bet he was not expecting Ms. Cole to drop that truth bomb on him. Anyway, when both their moms caught wind of the news about the pregnancy, they decided to contact each other. And I must confess, it was not a friendly conversation. Called her and her daughter, other daughter, Tasha was in the background yelling, he's not the only option, he's not the only option. It may be somebody else's, it may be somebody else's. And I'm going, no, really? No, that's not true. I, you can hear my Hold house. on one second, Ms. Cole, I'm, I'm gonna get to you. If I heard that over the phone, I would also have doubts about the paternity of the child. But there was some truth amidst all their yelling. Apparently, there was another potential father to the baby, but Ms. Cole and her mom claimed that he could not be the father. And this was the reason. You not told her, me not my child. Text message. Not my daughter. Um, yes, I Facebook. did. What I believe I'm hearing through this testimony is that there is another possibility. Yes. But, Your Honor, he's fixed and he did not complete. Hmm. She has a point, though. Even if the act wasn't finished, that doesn't mean a baby can't be made. Well, guess what? That was not the only mind-blowing truth that came out of Ms. Cole's mouth. She claimed the other potential father was old enough to be her father. And how I... old is the other person? He's old 43. enough to be my father. Like oh. Okay. I think he's 43, then. 43. Oh. Okay. And Miss Lake, we have... I, d I do have, um the text messages about her lying when I asked her uh, if I was the only possibility. Well, Mr. Gilbert was not going to accept a baby just because she said he was the father. Ms. Cole told the judge that everything Mr. Gilbert and his mom believed to be true was based on rumors and lies that people were telling them. The baby and people telling her, uh, telling her thing, uh, lies, and also telling me lies at the same time. I have no clue who this person is, but they contacted me on Facebook telling me that they're related to Mr. Gilbert, that they hope that he gets full custody o over the baby. Uh, can these moms find a way to speak without yelling at each other? Jeez. Mr. Gilbert's mom came prepared to defend her son. Trust me, she had evidence showing that the day the paternity test was taken, Ms. Cole was not certain about the father and was praying that the results would place Mr. Gilbert as the father. The day they went to take the paternity test, this says your daughter is praying that it, that it is my son's. That what she is doesn't that? know for sure. Wait, what do you have? Right here, Jerome, Your Honor. Please you hand me like that evidence. See this? She is praying that it is, that it is. Wait. I want it to be his so bad. You want it to be his or you yes, know? Yes, I do. Now, that is just ridiculous coming from Ms. Cole's mom. At least we know one thing now. They have no idea who the father of the child is. Once again, Mr. Gilbert's mom had some evidence regarding the conception date, and she explained her doubts to the judge by saying this. Your Honor, I Your have Your a conception Honor. and due date calendar here that I'd like you to see. You do? All yes, right, Jerome, pass that to me, please. Um, the conception date that my son and Miss Cole slept together was around April 9th. I, when I asked, they said it was around 7th, 8th, or 9th. 
I was told her due date was January 2nd. With all this doubt and confusion, the only way out of this mess is to reveal the results of the DNA test. Judge Lauren had seen enough of their uncertainty regarding the paternity of the child, and she decided to reveal the results. Mr. Gilbert, you are not the father. <sighs> Okay, baby. <laughs> I can admit when I'm wrong. Miss Cole, I know this was not the answer you wanted, hun. I know that. The father don't want nothing to do with the baby. My baby don't have a dad. <laughs> Looking at this couple, you could tell they just weren't meant for each other. Mrs. Johnson dragged Mr. Johnson to court on the matter of him not being a good dad. Was Mr. Johnson having any of it? Hell no. Their messy situation began like this. Mrs. Johnson, you are here today on the verge of divorce because you claim your husband of seven years is forcing you to choose him over your 12-year-old son, Elijah. You have petitioned the court to order Mr. Johnson into family counseling because you say if he will not agree, you plan to divorce him. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. and Mrs. Johnson have been at each other's throats for quite some time now. Having been married for up to seven years, their marriage has crash-landed from a state of bad to worse. And the shocking thing here is, it's all because of their 12-year-old kid. Trust me, it's crazy. He would participate in our son Ethan's, and he would never participate in Elijah's. That's not that true That photo right there was Elijah's birthday, and I took, him, I took him to the go-karts, and he was supposed to meet us after work and didn't even show up. My son was so upset, he sat there and cried because nobody came to he his birthday He wasn't upset party. that I didn't come, he was upset that his cousins didn't come from Florida. Mrs. Johnson went on and on about how Mr. Johnson was wasn't threatening both of their kids. In her words, he had a favorite one. You can bet Mr. Johnson wasn't just going to let her run her mouth. He comes in like a blazing inferno, telling her she's to be blamed. It's like a war zone in the courtroom. And it just hurts my son's feelings because he never shows that extra step to she where- She doesn't enforce me as a father figure. She doesn't- I shouldn't I'm, have I'm to the father because that's he's there. been in his life since he was two years there, exactly. old and he should take that extra step long, on his own. If I've been there this and long, And you see noticeable differences on a day-to-day -day basis as to how he treats both boys. Yes, I do. As they kept trawling each other in the courtroom like it was another WWE wrestling match, mind-blowing revelations started to pop out. Believe me, these revelations will leave your jaws dropping from your mouth. He does have a dad. I'm there for him. I potty trained him. I've taught him how to ride bikes. I play video games with him. I've yeah, tried this was so years many ago, times. Though. It was Mr. years ago. Mr. Johnson, but do you show favoritism? Do you? No, I to don't. To your yes, biological he child? I don't he show does. He will go no. in our son's room that we have together, and he will go He's in my there son. And I'm not going to be disrespected and then deal with it. After Mrs. Johnson was done throwing shades at her husband in the courtroom, it was Mr. Johnson's turn to spill the beans. And my God, did he have a lot to say about Mrs. Johnson and their 12-year-old boy. It was like an unending love series. Mr. Johnson, I have to ask you, do you have any idea why Elijah would feel this way? Elijah is disrespectful to me, to yeah, her, but he's so you to everyone, like, well, to everyone. Me when you Mr. say Johnson he's disrespectful, he's disrespectful to everyone. First, give me he some takes, specifics. What do you mean? She told him, we got a new place together. I started to remodel the entire place. She told him specifically to clean up after himself. He is 12 years old. I cleaned the entire house. The rants go on and on, and Mr. Johnson keeps pouring out his mind like a wounded lion. Does it end there? Of course not. Mrs. Johnson, filled with rage, jumps into the ring again and starts throwing shots at her husband. She even calls him a kid. These two can't wait to rip each other apart in the courtroom. I'm trying and to I teach him to be a man. I'm trying to teach this boy to be I a man. How specifically are you trying to teach him to be a man? If he's 12 years old, can he pick up after himself? Can he listen to his mom? Can he respect his so elders? So learning how to do chores, clean up after respect, himself. Respect? Respect? Yeah, but you gotta you think give he respect his I mother? did give respect for many, many years. I get told, oh, you don't go to his baseball games. Mrs. Johnson's dad walks up to the stage and drops bombs on bombs, countering every single word Mr. Johnson said. It was almost like her dad was her husband's biggest OPP. Man just stood there, throwing heavy blows at Mr. Johnson. It was a tug of war and nobody wanted to be beaten. Everybody. Um, I see Elijah being left out on a lot of things. Um, left out no of what? Father, son, um, ice cream. Uh, you ask Ethan to pick up your room. It's like, would you pick up your room? What's wrong with you? Why don't so you? So why know, are we here for the way you talk to Ethan? You know, talk to him like a human being, not like an animal. Knowing Mr. Johnson, you could bet he was ready for his comeback. As soon as Mrs. Johnson's dad was done talking, boom! He came with his comebacks that hit like bullets shot by a firing squad. Wait, 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 wait,
wait, doesn't that go for both? Grandfather. Doesn't yes. that go for both kids though? Wouldn't that go for both children, not just Elijah? Like what Ethan, my son, he does the same thing. He babies Elijah. Oh, it'll you should, be okay. You shouldn't yell at Ethan oh, either. Oh, it'll be like okay. That. You yell at him. Your daughter will admit so it. So now you're saying that Mr. Amolch yells at. He's way more aggressive with Ethan than he is with Elijah. The moment of truth was finally here, but the air was thick with uncertainty as to whether their marriage was going to be saved or shattered for good. Time to see what the future holds for them. I hope you guys are ready. Everyone's parenting styles are different. Ask for the anger management request. You countersued and petitioned this court to order that Ms. Johnson go to anger management. Absolutely. I need to figure out how to do these things or I feel like I'm gonna explode on everybody. I do. So you are consenting to take those anger management courses. Yeah, yes. Wonderful. Just like in the previous case, Ms. Davis was present with her grandmom, claiming to be in desperate need of assistance with the upbringing of her child. Ms. Davis claimed that the only reason the defendant was denying her baby was because of his fiance. The case began like this. Ms. Davis, you say you and your grandmother are in desperate need of assistance in raising your one month old son, Josiah, and you need the defendant, Mr. Means, to accept his responsibility. You both believe the only reason Mr. Means is denying your child is because of his fiance. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. With that response, the defendant, Mr. Means, does not want to have anything to do with the child. Now, Mr. Means didn't deny the fact that they kicked it in bed a couple of times. He said that during the period they were having sex, Ms. Davis was messing around with some of his friends. You were having sex with her? Yeah, I did. Unprotected? Yes, ma'am. During the window of conception? Having three times. You only had sex three times? Three times. But was it during the window of conception? Yes, yes it was, yes, yes, wow. yes. It was. So how is it you can exclude yourself from being a possible father? What I know he's not mine, and out of, out of six, seven friends and had them two, the same time I have. Wow. So he was actually living with Ms. Davis and her grandmom? Disappointing on his part. Apparently it was Ms. Davis's grandmother who gave her the go ahead to have her sexual adventures in the house rather than on the streets. Her grandmom claimed it was safer that way. Not at the time the that I conceived, no there was not. And there was only one other gentleman, but he wasn't coming at that time. Grandma, I have to ask, why was she in the bed with him in your house? I felt it was safer for her being there than in the street. And so you want you you said it was okay for her to have sex there than to be out in the street having it? Yes, Your Honor. Hmm, that piece of evidence right there places Mr. Means as a possible father. As you would expect, Mr. Means was not going to agree with the explanation Ms. Davis gave to the judge. The moment she was done explaining, he walked up to the exhibit and did this. Do you do I do mind? Would you like to challenge something on the board? That's a no, that's a no, that's a no, that's a no. Okay. Come on now, baby girl. You talking about two men, you got three, four other people you need no, to bring up in. No, that is not true. That's not that play is not me true. like that. So Nobody hold on. You put an X like on every month. And you put an X on June. I is the X for June. not having sex no. or the sex for extra sex? Talking about people who know how to yell, these two fit the description without breaking a sweat. At least we know one thing. When they were done with their sexual relationship, Ms. Davis ran back to her ex. When Ms. Davis found out about the baby, this was how it went when she told Mr. Means. And I told him that I was pregnant and he didn't want nothing to do with it. Mr. Means? She don't have no proof with that. How I found out my fiance right here. I, Your Honor, I, I have here. text she, messages yeah. of Mr. Means. She's just doing me, calling me his father, baby mother and, and just, saying that he's a, uh, a bad baby father because he couldn't make it to the hospital and telling people that he's my baby father. Oh, Mr. Means was caught right in the act. I'd love to see how he lies his way out of that one. In trying to defend himself, he changed his story and told the judge that at the time he sent those texts, he had a feeling that there was a probability he could end up being the father. Then Mr. Means, your response is, I'm sorry, Monty, that I'm not there. Shake my head. I'm a sorry baby father. Father. Now that's how I'm feeling right now. Did you send these texts? Yep, and there's a reason why I send it too. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, I'll be on with you. I, I, I'll be on with you. What's the reason? What's the reason why? Because at first, as I did at first, had a possibility of thinking of mine, but after what people were telling me and what I was seeing, how she is. Moving on, even though Mr. Means told the judge he had a feeling that the baby could have been his, he now believed the baby belonged to her ex-boyfriend. Without hesitation, Judge Lauren asked the ex-boyfriend to come into the courtroom and tell his side of the story. I'm the potential father, only because Imani was seeing Mr. Means at the time. We got back together. She made me fully aware that she had a relation or whatever 
whatever they had and that he made might have made a mistake and got her pregnant. That was it. But were you also sleeping with Miss Davis during the window of time where she conceived? It was kind of on and off, Your Honor. It wasn't, it was maybe once a week, something like that. Oh, wow. Even the ex-boyfriend told the judge she was messing around with other guys. Oh, well, the moment we've all been waiting for is here. Let's see what truth the DNA results bring out. In the case of Davis versus Means, when it comes to one month old, Josiah Davis, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Pittman, you are not the father. got another wild one on our hands today, folks. The drama is off the charts in this episode, and folks, Judge Lauren Lake isn't having any of it. First up, we've got Ms. Jones, who's adamant that this guy, Mr. Trevino, is the father of her daughter, Cheryl. But the thing is, Mr. Trevino isn't so sure about that. In fact, he's got some serious doubts, and he's not afraid to let everyone know it. Ms. Hernandez, you are eager today to prove to a man that he is the father of your children. Now that man, Mr. Trevino, is waiting outside of the courtroom and will join us shortly. Now, Ms. Jones, you say Mr. Trevino is denying your child. Now, Ms. Hernandez is claiming that Mr. Trevino is the father of her son, Thomas. Talk about a complicated situation, right? It's like a real life soap opera. And Judge Lake is just trying to keep everything together. He says, I'm not the father, I, I am I'm the father. I'm not denying, I'm simply requesting the truth, Your Honor. I'm not denying anybody and I've been there for both of my You have not been there. My you family and I have done a Keyword, lot. Keyword, your family. You are the father, remember that. You have not been there. But let me tell you, when Mr. Trevino starts airing his doubts, that's when things really start to heat up. He's talking about how Ms. Jones was club hopping and bringing home all sorts of guys, and how she even told him straight up that Cheryl might not be his. You no, know, we went to the doctor. I asked him around what time did she get pregnant. He gave you, me around. You don't a, even know what you know, time because you're not right. You don't uh, know uh, what time, she, nothing. You don't even know what time it is now. So let me tell you, so he does on. not know. Mr. Trevino, you have an issue with the days of concept, and yes, you sir. submitted these days to the court yes, Your Honor, to outline your doubt. And then, to make matters even worse, Mr. Trevino starts throwing shade at Ms. Hernandez too, saying that she's got a reputation and that he's seen some sketchy dudes coming and going from her place. This guy is really pulling out all the stops, huh? I did. I did. I was in love with him and I did feel that he was a good person. So he's it's a your charmer. contention that he, you were intimate with him during that time, the estimated dates of conception? I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I don't remember nothing because he's a charmer. I was always intimate when he oh, wanted. Oh, now you don't remember. When he wanted to be intimate. I know it was the springtime. But you know what they say, the truth will set you free. And that's exactly what Judge Lake is determined to find out. She's not about to let these two ladies or Mr. Trevino off the hook that easy. She's digging deep, asking all the tough questions, and trying to get to the bottom of this whole mess. I said, you know what, I've been doing all this for you and We've the baby. Been, we she's were probably not even mine. And she he says, matter of fact, get, mm. matter of fact, she's not yours. Oh, and it felt so good. So you you're saying you you said it out of spite. I did, and it was no, wrong. To no, this day, no, to she this had day, a look of I truth on her wrong face. Because I hate when women And let me tell you, when Ms. Jones starts getting all defensive and throwing shade back at Mr. Trevino, that's when Judge Lake really lays down the law. She's like, hold up. Missy, you can't be calling this guy out and then expect him to just roll over and accept it. Ooh, she's bringing the heat. What type of person she was, you know? She, we started talking about, you know, personal things and this and that. She started telling me, we you know, things she's done. I told Cheryl her about stuff I've and done. How you, you know. need to be a dad so, and accept the reality anyways, that you're the father. That's what today is. I doubt it. That's what concept. today is. So let's because of the doctor. Today. But the real fireworks start when Judge Lake gets to the DNA test results. Now, you know she's not going to let these folks off the hook until she's got the hard facts. And man, the results are a real doozy. Mr. Trevino, you are her father. Mr. Trevino, you are the father. Now you seem relieved but not surprised in either circumstance. Well, Your Honor, I'm relieved because this, this can put a big end to the questioning and the doubting. This next couple has been through the ringer. Tony claims that when Beatrice came back from a trip, she had been unfaithful, and now he's not sure if he's the father of her newborn baby, Deja. Beatrice admits to leaving Tony for another man and having a two-week affair, but she argues that it was because Tony wasn't fulfilling his responsibilities as a father and partner. This is already getting messy. You say that when she returned, you forgave her and quickly resumed your sexual relationship? Yes. Shortly after, she announced she was pregnant. 
Now you claim there's a distinct possibility that you're not the father of her newborn baby, Deja. Now, Ms. Troutman. Yes, Your Honor. You admit to leaving Mr. Miller for another man and to having a two-week affair. Yes. Beatrice had a rough upbringing with a mother who was more of a friend than a parent. She ended up running away from home and found a maternal figure in Tony's mom, Cindy. This is where Beatrice and Tony met and fell for each other. They had their first child together, and then Deja came along. But now, the future of their family is hanging by a thread. But um, she was not a mother to me. She was more of my friend. I took care of my brother and my sisters, and I just got tired of living that life. So I started to run away from home. Well, when I ran away from home, I had met Tony's mother, Cindy. Um, she took me in. She, you know, put clothes, roof over my head, food in my mouth. She was a mother that I never had. Before. I love her dearly, and I thank her dearly for doing that for me. Judge Lake is not impressed with the way these two have been handling their relationship. She points out that they're acting more like irresponsible teenagers than mature adults with children to care for. The judge is particularly concerned about the fact that they've involved Tony's mother, Cindy, in their relationship drama. She makes it clear that Cindy's interference is not helping the situation, and that Tony and Beatrice need to take responsibility for their own actions. Well, what happened, Ms. Trauma? Well, what happened was, was when he had went away, we was broken up. We had gotten into an argument. We were no longer together when I was dating the person that I met at the platform. We were not together. We were still so talking. So when he did come back on his trip, me and my friend with my daughter was leaving the plasma center and he was walking down the street. Things take an even more dramatic turn when Beatrice reveals that she's been talking to other men, including a guy she met on a chat line. She admits to sleeping with this new guy while she and Tony were separated. Judge Lake is visibly frustrated, shaking her head in disbelief. Oh, it was not during, just no one fight. Ms. Troutman, you admit that during that time, you were intimate with another man. Yes. And during that time, were you intimate with anyone else? No. Well, yes, I was when me and him... I'm sorry. Really? Yes, Get I was. Straight. When, when me and him, When me and him got into it and we had broken up, yes, I was with that guy that I was with. The judge then turns her attention to Tony's mother, Cindy. Cindy firmly believes that Deja looks just like the other man Beatrice was with, the one from the plasma center. Judge Lake is fuming, though. She reminds Cindy that her interference is not helping and that she needs to let Tony and Beatrice figure this out on their own. Busted by that, that I, you I ran left. out the house, and slipped look. on a banana peel, and no. landed in a bed with somebody no, else. I called, no, I called, no, that is not what happened. I'm trying no. to figure out how this That's not what happened. No. leads no. up to you sleeping no. with yet another man besides the plasma center guy. Come on, let, let well, tell I'm the truth now. With my As the tension in the courtroom reaches a boiling point, Judge Lake delivers the DNA results. The moment of truth has arrived, and the judge's expression suggests that the news might not be what Tony and Beatrice were hoping for. The way she pauses and chooses her words carefully has us on the edge of our seats, and we're all wondering what the outcome will be. Mr. Miller, you are not her father. Hey, hey, hey. Patrice. Patrice, baby, I, I love you, baby. I, I will. I'm Come here. Hey, hey. Jerome, Your can Honor. you please go check on Mr. Miller and Miss Troutman? May I say something to you? Yes, ma'am. This family has been torn over this a lot. We've got a former blackjack dealer, a husband who can't have kids, and a whole lot of drama. You already know this one's gonna be wild. Mrs. Matson comes in claiming her husband is the father of her six-month-old daughter, but he's not having it. Turns out, these two have a pretty messy history. They met when the husband was on his wedding night at the casino where Mrs. Matson worked. Mrs. Matson, you say you are here today because you are determined to prove to your husband, Mr. Matson, that your six-month-old daughter is his biological child. You claim that he is trying to abandon your daughter and has a track record of doing so with other children. Now, Mr. Matson, you claim Mrs. Matson Matson has been having affairs with other men. Things only get crazier from there. Mr. Matson claims he can't have kids because of his medical issues, but Mrs. Matson insists the baby is his. And get this, she admits to cheating on him once, but says it was because he was never around and was always with his boss's widow. Judge Lake is already getting frustrated with all the back and forth between these two. And this relationship. He came into the casino that I was working in. I was a 21 dealer. He came in, sat down at my table on his wedding day. Okay, I'm and almost afraid to ask what happens from there. What was the first thing I said to you? You asked me if I would like to be my 
next ex-wife. Yep. Is that what you said, Mr. Matson? Yes, Your Honor, it is. And then what happened from there? Uh, we had our ups and downs. Then Mr. Matson's sister, Ms. Lopez, gets involved and starts throwing some major shade at Mrs. Matson. She's convinced the baby isn't her brother's, and even says the baby doesn't look like him at all. Judge Lake is trying to keep things under control, but the bickering just won't stop. I so when she comes up pregnant... I'm like, who the hell is it? I've met I mean, she father. came in, she no. came in. I'm sitting on, on the couch. She hands me a, a stick with a, a line on it. First thing I'm saying, oh, what the hell is this and whose is it? She goes, it's yours. Because you just knew it wasn't yours. The real fireworks start when Mrs. Matson starts cussing up a storm and getting super defensive. She's accusing her husband of lying to everyone, including his own family, and says he's the one who's been cheating. Judge Lake tries to calm her down, but Mrs. Matson just keeps going off. Kids. That's hold on, Miss Matson. Now watch your language. Sorry, Your Honor. So when you tell the doctor, so cute. You tell the doctor, I didn't think I could have kids. The doctor was looking at you like, what? Like, what, what happened? What and then happened? the day that she was born, she comes out. She has red hair. Things really come to a head when Mrs. Matson brings up her husband's wedding ring. She claims he hasn't been wearing it for weeks, which just adds more fuel to the fire. Judge Lake is fed up with all the drama and personal attacks. She's trying to steer the conversation back to the paternity issue, but these two just won't stop going at each other. Not in this courtroom, please! <laughs> Wait, if he had a vasectomy, then why did I have my tubes taken out after I had her? So wait, I thought we were on heart anymore. medication. Well, wait a minute. I am when on... does the vasectomy happen? When I first came down with this, this problem, I was on 38 pills a day. Finally, Judge Lake has had enough and lays down the law. She tells them both to knock it off and show some respect, especially for the sake of their child. She's trying to get them to focus on what's important here, figuring out if Mr. Matson is the father. The tension in the courtroom is palpable, and you can practically feel Judge Lake's frustration through the screen. In the case of Matson versus Matson pertaining to six-month-old Sandy Matson, Mr. Matson, you are the father. Told you. you now you can child. apologize to me because I'm not the son. You are yeah. apologizing. You're nothing you. but a. You can right. put your language down. So then I'll tell you what, tomorrow I'll flight, buy you a one flight, you can leave. Leave that baby here with me, and I'll show you how to no. provide for her. Well, folks, get ready for some serious drama on paternity court. Today we've got a case that's sure to get Judge Lauren Lake's blood boiling. Brittany Aiken is suing her own mother for paternity fraud, and folks, this is one tangled web of lies and deceit. Lawsuit against your mother for paternity fraud you claim due to her many lies. You uncovered that one man is on your birth certificate, but you grew up calling another man dad. You are confused and say your world has been turned upside down. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Aiken, you say you've committed no crime and believe once the DNA results prove who you claim is your daughter's biological father. Brittany grew up up calling one man dad, but when she went to collect his survivor's benefits after he passed away, she found out that her birth certificate listed a different man as her father. Now, she's on a mission to uncover the truth. I'm going to call you Brittany, if you don't mind, because both of you all are aching, so. Yes, ma'am. Um, throughout your childhood, you were told that Mr. Jenkins was your biological father? Yes, Your Honor. Did you have a relationship with him? I had a wonderful relationship with my daddy. I you loved did. him dearly, yes. And so, were you ever presented with any information, indication that someone else could be your biological father? No, Your Honor. As right the here, case Your unfolds, Honor. we learn that Brittany's mother, Bonnie, had been lying to her for years about who her real father is. Brittany believes the man she called Dad, Henry Jenkins, is her biological father, but Bonnie insists that's not the case. Instead, she claims the name on Brittany's birth certificate, Thomas Aiken, is the real dad. When you got your birth certificate, what did you find? That Thomas Lewis Aiken name was on my birth certificate, not Mr. Jenkins. When you see the name Thomas Lewis Aiken, what do you do? I'm puzzled because I don't know this man. I You've never, never met, heard of him? I heard of him, but I never seen him as in person. But your last I, name is Aiken? Yeah, that's confusing me too. Brittany is understandably confused and hurt, and she's determined to get to the bottom of this mess. She even went to confront Thomas Aiken's family, hoping to get some answers. But when she saw Aiken's mother driving away, Brittany couldn't help but notice the resemblance. Pregnant in the beginning of new November. It was the beginning of November? Yes, yes. How do you know that was the date? Because uh, it was the me him was having sex, Your Honor. I remember the bed broke down, and we kept on doing it. You kept on doing it. That's right, and that's how I did. That's how 
how I deceived her. That night, that, that night. You, you, that's how you deceived her or conceived her? Conceived her that night. Now, Bonnie has a wild story to explain the Aiken name on the birth certificate. She claims that when she was asleep, Aiken filled it out without her knowledge. Really, Bonnie? That's the best you can come up with? Judge Lake isn't buying it, and neither are we. I asked her, has she seen? I went in and I asked her, has she seen Thomas? She said, no. I said, where then? She said, uh, where did mama and Thomas' mother? She was coming out the driveway, and she said, I gave her my phone number to give to Mr. Akers to call me. When you got there, Brittany, what were you feeling? As his mom was pulling out the driveway, me and my husband looked at her, and we was puzzled because I'm a big built woman, and his mom is a big built woman. Brittany is clearly frustrated, and she's not afraid to let her emotions show. She's been calling Bonnie out on her lies, and the tension in that courtroom is palpable. You can practically feel the steam coming out of Judge Lake's ears as she tries to make sense of this tangled web of deceit. As well, you just don't believe that. Why would I believe it's something? It's all about, about this money situation, Your Honor. That's all it's about, the money situation. It's nothing about no money, because the simple uh, fact, she never did nothing from me in my whole 30 years. So why, why could it, why, you only had me a dollar in my whole entire 30 years. I ain't never years. heard you, I ain't no dollar. You so, stop that lie. I don't understand why she's telling, she, this the same thing she went and told. That's why I went back and talked to Thomas. What, what did this blood, Thomas what mama did this come and to? Thomas. And just when you think things couldn't get any more dramatic, the real twist comes when the DNA results are revealed. You might want to strap in for this one, folks. In the case of Aiken versus Aiken, when it comes to 30-year-old Brittany Aiken, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Aiken, you are not the father. If she needs some help from me, anything I could do for her, I would do it. Because, you know... I see you. An avuncular DNA test with the closest biological relative, his brother, James Jenkins, was performed. Mr. Wilson, who's 48 years old, is desperately trying to prove he's not the father of Miss Butler's two daughters, Zaria and Niana. He's saying Miss Butler was a liar, cheating all the time, and had multiple guys running out of the house. Miss Butler, you say he's absolutely incorrect. Yes, these kids is definitely his. So let me ask you this, because it's 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 right here in my court file. So let's just be honest about it. There's a significant age difference between you, Mr. Yes. Wilson, and Butler. You are 48, she is 25. Yes. Are you sure this is not a situation where you may feel like Miss Butler is out there? But Miss Butler, who's only 25, is having none of it. She's insisting that these kids are definitely Mr. Wilson's, even though there's a huge age gap between them. Judge Lake ain't buying it though. She's calling out Miss Butler, saying the age difference might be making Mr. Wilson feel like she's out there doing her thing. So I want to go back and understand your relationship. And since there are two children here, and you question eternity relating both of them, I want to start with one child, and then we'll move on to the next child, so we'll make sure the testimony is understandable, OK? So let's start with Zariah. Can you take me to the nature of your relationship? Mr. Wilson claims he caught Miss Butler getting out of another guy's car around the time Zaria, the four-year-old, was conceived. And he even saw text messages where she was calling this guy daddy. I want to understand this. At the time Zariah was conceived, you thought you all were committed. I thought so. But we wasn't living together, so it was kind of different, though. Oh, you can't be in a committed relationship unless you live together? I mean, I did love him, though. I really did, but... No, she didn't. I did love you, but I just... I mean, if you love me, you wouldn't have never... I mean, get, get, get called at work with another guy. But Miss Butler's got a different story. She admits that she and this other guy tried to have sex, but they stopped and it didn't happen. Hmm, not sure we're buying that one. Mr. Wilson's even saying he thought they were trying to work things out, but Miss Butler just kept on lying. Sexual contact, yep. but he didn't finish the act. Yeah, because I end up stopping. Okay. So we never really... So, Mr. Wilson, how did you even find out Miss Butler was pregnant with Zariah because she's admitting to everything you saying. Yeah. So. Um, well, we're still in close contact, you know, and I thought, like I said, um, I gave her another chance, and she told me she wasn't gonna do it no more. And get this, Mr. Wilson didn't even know about Zaria's birth until hours later because he didn't have his phone with him at the hospital. Can you believe that? He's saying he thought the baby might be his, so he put his last name on the birth certificate, but then found out it was actually Miss Butler's last name that ended up on the certificate. Oh, he wasn't even there. No, man. Because my That's phone, I didn't have my phone around that time. They got phones at the hospital. They got a way to get in contact. She had called me to three hours later after the baby was Wait a born. minute, you went to the hospital? You 
you were in a relationship and you went to the hospital and had the baby without even letting them know? Didn't let me know. The other guy must be in there. Like I said, I didn't have my phone. What are you talking about? Thank you. Now, let's move on to the second child, Neanna, who's 19 months old. Mr. Wilson tells the court that when he would go check on the kids at Miss Butler's apartment, he'd catch other guys trying to hide in the bathroom. Sounds like a real party going on over there. I asked him, like, hide baby Because you've been denying the baby, that's why. So why would her name be your last name? Okay, because well, you say he's her father. You think I you? know, though, but he's denying... <laughs> When he says, but you have sex with other people, too, you don't deny that. You just say, I have sex with you, that you guys have sex all the time. You understand that it really just takes one time. But Miss Butler is insisting that Niana is definitely Mr. Wilson's kid, even though he wasn't there for the birth. It's clear these two have some major issues to work out. So I don't, I, I'm not thinking that. You wouldn't have The kids is his, so there's no other possibly, possible wouldn't father. No, the kids is his. So if Zariah is not your biological I'm, I'm gonna be sad because um, that's a wonderful little child and she shouldn't be put through that. What she going through with her mother. I'm gonna be real sad. All right, uh, I'm ready for the results. Judge Lake is fuming at this point. She's calling out Miss Butler, saying she's barely looking her in the eye and that she's losing this game. Ouch, that's gotta hurt. The judge is even telling them they need to get some help because they're losing, and so are the kids. This is getting intense. It was his, but Nyana, you're pretty confident about? Yes, I am. Nyana's definitely yours. You said that about the other one. We I, we just heard that same testimony, didn't we, just, Jerome? Just heard but I did thought that both of the kids was yours. Like, we always had sex without no condom. So that's why I don't understand. But Nyana's definitely yours, though. It's a lottery now. Is Mr. Wilson the dad these kids need? Will Miss Butler finally get her act together? The DNA test results are in, but the storm is far from over. We're about to see just how far this dysfunctional couple has pushed Judge Lake. Mr. Wilson, you are the father. My little baby. Yeah, Mr. Righteous, you done missed 19 months of that little baby's life. Well, I can make up for it. Yeah, you better start making up for it now. Both of you all better start making up for some stuff. All this blessings both of you all got, I didn't get to have my son till I was 41. And boy, I thank the Lord I couldn't, I was so grateful just to get one. I know you struggling.